Hello, everybody. I'm Java Archfiend, and these are my thoughts on episode 7, but... <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. First of all, I would love to say a big thank you to the guys down at Production Studio and writing staff. It's not another self-worth episode! Yes! Thank you! Instead, it's an episode concerning the balance between farming and nature, and about peer pressure, to an extent. Which, to be honest, are good lessons to learn, trying to compromise in certain areas that benefit all groups. Shame that the solution reached here in the show wouldn't work out here in reality, but hey, it's a magical world of talking ponies with magic and stuff. If we could solve our problems as easily as in this show, I doubt we'd even be as enamored with this pastel paradise as we all are. Of note is the son in this episode. We got teased that it would be Danny Elfman-esque and all that from Megan McCarthy and, da and Ingram's tweets. And boom, Ingram did not fail to uphold that tease. This definitely held vibes from Nightmare Before Christmas, but that's not what I really like about this song. It serves a purpose as a sort of musical debate between Fluttershy and Applejack, and actually continues the plot of the episode. That and, well, just, just look at it! It goes all grim and near monochrome for Applejack's parts as she goes on about how the bats are monsters and need to be gotten rid of, whilst Fluttershy's bits are far more colourful, even by MLP standards, and seems to have almost a halo-like quality surrounding herself and the other characters. Even the bats are very different, hideous demons in AJ's versions, and cute cuddly critters in Flutter's side. The song itself also changes depending on who's singing. AJ's lines are accompanied by these deep octaves and instrumentation, whilst Fluttershy's are far more light and higher in the scale. It's almost this day Aria-esque in how clever that little bit is there with the contrasting views. And now onto the fandom explosions. Bat Pony serves canon, OMG! Um, guys, they're already canon. Are we forgetting Luna's night guard here who pulled her chariot in the Nightmare Night episode? Seriously? Are we just forgetting about them? Speaking of, are we ever going to see those guys again? It's great we've been seeing more of Luna of late, but come on. More night guard ponies, please, as well. I'm getting sidetracked here. In seriousness, though, I loved the way they handled Fluttershy's transformation into Flutterbat. The gradual transformation definitely made for a bigger and better payoff than it would have been if it was an instantaneous transformation. Although I would have liked to have seen how they did the feather wings into leather bat ones. And if it had continued, if it would have gone any further than it had. And I thought this was just a fan artwork thing, but after watching the episode a few more times, I noticed that Cutie Mark itself had transformed as well, from little butterflies to little bats. Little details like that really add off to big payoffs. Those, that was a very nice little touch there. An interesting point that is, it only seemed to happen at night as well. Admittedly, it may have done so during the day if the other's hand snapped her out of the apple hypnosis earlier by accident, but I guess that's a question for another time. But the fact they did it at night definitely, in my opinion, gave it more thematic weight. And of course, how can I comment on this episode without mentioning the little bit at the end where we see Fluttershy with, an, a, tiny, with a tiny adorable little fang? I really do hope this has repercussions later on in the show and isn't just some throwaway gag. This show hasn't done throwaway stuff before, and so I think we can all agree that it would be a serious letdown for everyone if this wasn't some kind of payoff being built up here. Given that so far the ending bits have been the Shadow Pony, the comic book vanishing, and now Flutter's Fang, yes, I know, I've skipped some. I'm not counting Daring Don't's book at the end, because that was the book Rainbow was desperate to have, so that episode was wrapping itself up. And I'm not counting the flight to the finish ending, because, again, that was the episode wrapping itself up, with a build-up to its own arc of the Equestrian Games. The others, however, they seem to be a little bit more ambiguous. One can only hope that these are actually building up to something later on. Maybe we'll see Flush Eye become one of the Night Guard. Now that would be awesome! I can just imagine Fluttershy now in Night Guard Pony Regalia. That is adorable. And before I sign off, I'd like to wish everyone a Happy New Year, Happy Hogmanay, or whatever it is you guys celebrate out there for us here in Scotland, Britain, it's Hogmanay, so. Hope you guys have an awesome new year. Looking forward to seeing new stuff in the new year. 2013 has been a bit of a weird one. 
And with that, Jaffa Archfiend, signing out.